So today I thought I should tell you how the Klebsch-Cotton and coefficients are written down before we attempt this quadrupole moment using Wigner Ricard theorem. Okay. How is Klebsch-Cotton coefficients done? So I already explained in the Young diagram language as in the last lecture on Saturday. By the way, today I will stop the lecture at 4.45 because I think the, they have some recording. So, we need to leave by 4.45. Okay. So, this cross this. So, let me do only SU2, SU2 group. Now, you understand what this means is. The way to see it is that the state for this can be written as j 1 equal to half m 1 can be anything that is the state which belongs to this two dimensional representation m 1 could be plus or minus j j 1 okay. and then you take a product with j 2 which is half and m 2. So, you are taking now, a fundamental basis or a primary basis, you are taking a product of tensor product of two primary bases and you want to find out this one, the corresponding thing will be j equal to what? This one corresponds to 2 j boxes, some one. So, this one is, this has two boxes j has to be 1 correct and m will be any arbitrary 1. Let me put a curved line to remember that it is for a binary basis obtained from taking tensor product of primary basis. And then this one is trivial as I said this is like a unit representation or a trivial representation. This you can treat it like as if it is not there. Right. So, this corresponds to j equal to 0, m equal to 0. Is that right? So, essentially, if I want to write j equal to 1 m state, I should be able to rewrite in terms of this basis. So, right. So, I should be able to rewrite in terms of that basis. So, that is what we write all possible values of m 1 and m 2 correct. J 1 and j 2 are fixed because the primary basis has fixed this j 1 and j 2. So, no j 1 j 2 summation. So, only the corresponding states m 1 and m 2 can vary between minus j to plus j. Okay. So, m 1 m 2 then the notation which we are going to follow is c j m j 1 m 1 semicolon j 2 m 2 and then you have j 1 m 1 product with j 2 m 2 technically a tensor product, but many times they do not put the tensor product they write by the side of it. Many books do not write it like this since j 1 and j 2 are fixed they do not even write j 1 and j 2 they start with let us look at the system with j 1 and j 2. Okay. So, and then this one they formally write it as m 1 m 2. Here, this is what the uh, quantum mechanics textbooks will look at it. And there is a procedure of determining these matrices, these elements, and many of them in the textbook, if you 
any tables if you call it as Klebsch-Gordon tables. So, if you look at the Klebsch Gordon coefficient table, which you can go and look it up, there is a way of determining it. Somebody has worked out everything. It is like multiplying some digit of numbers, many times you use a calculator or a log book, log table. So, similarly, you can fall back on this Klebsch Gordon table, at least for this course, because the course is not for deriving the Klebsch Gordon, but you should learn if you have not learnt it. In quantum mechanics flows, please learn it how to do it at least for simple cases like spin half composition and spin one composition. Okay. But for this course, you just need to go and look at the table. As I said in even in the exam, I will give the table to you. Okay. So, but you should know how to read the table. So, that typically the table will be like so they will say J1 and J2. And then there will be values here. In this particular case, it is m1 half, m2 half, right. You can have m1 half, m2 minus half, m1 minus half, m2 plus half, and then m1 minus half m 2 minus that is the tensor product rule when you wrote the four bases you wrote it as up 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 down down up down down that is what I have written here up 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 down down up down down that is the tensor product here you will have j equal to 1 m equal to 1, j equal to 1, m equal to 0, j equal to 1, m equal to minus 1 and finally, you have j equal to 0, m equal to 0. These are these states. Okay. So, we need to find these elements. So, this element I would write it as j equal to 1, m equal to 1. As I said, j 1 and j 2 are fixed. Sorry, the m and j I am putting it as a superscript. So, let me just follow the same notation. Half semicolon j 2 equal to half m 2 equal to half okay, and so on. So, every coefficient here is the corresponding projector coefficient which helped you to determine the binary basis. Clear? Why binary? Because it is a tensor product of primary base. So, this coefficient table will be given to you so, if suppose I give you this coefficient as 1, I think this one is 1, then you will have If I give this coefficient to you, you can basically plug it in and write out the states, right. Suppose I want to write j equal to 1, m equal to 0. So, that from looking at this j equal to 1, m equal to 0 is a linear combination of this piece and this piece with these coefficients, right. So, it becomes 1 over root 2. I am going to write a shorthand notation m 1 m 2 here. So, it is going to be m 1 is half, 
m 2 is minus half plus 1 over root 2 m 1 is minus half m 2 is plus. So, this is the way one could read out from the Klebsch-Gordon matrix table what those coefficients are and you can write the binary basis state corresponding to a three dimensional irreducible representation of S u 2 in terms of fundamental objects which are spin half particles composite S spin 1 with these coefficients. This is the superposition of the spin states of the elementary objects which constitutes the composite object. Is this clear? Okay, so, now we will let us get to the problem which we want to do. So, for completeness on the slide I have again put this thing. Okay, so, if you see the slide I have written this formally and then I there is a procedure of determining the Klebsch Gordon which is not pertinent to this course, but if you do it then you can appreciate this table otherwise you can use the table. Okay, so, suppose I give you spin orbit coupling. Okay. Suppose, I want to look at a system where you have an orbital angular momentum L and spin angular momentum S, S is any way spin is half. You can combine those two L plus right, we can do that. What will that be? So, I can look at a situation where let us take L to be 2. Okay, and S to be half. What is the Young diagram for L equal to 2? It is this, is that right? This is for L equal to 1. Twice this number should be the number of boxes. So, how many should be there? 4 boxes. L is the orbital angular momentum, 2 L should be the number of boxes representing that because dimension of this will be what is the dimension of this? I am doing only SU 2, 2, 3, 4, 5. What is the answer? So, L equal to 2 will be 5 dimensional. So, it is 4 boxes correct and then you take tensor product with spin half, spin half is always a single box right and then what are the possibilities you can get here? You will get 5 boxes together and then 1 box can go below three boxes that side. This can be ignored because it is like a unit representation. So, essentially it is 5 box. five box and then three box. So, what will the value of j be for this phi by 2 half of it and j to be 3 by 2. So, these are the states for this, these are the states for this. This m will take values from minus 5 by d to plus 5 by 2, this m will take values from minus 3 by 2 to plus 2 by 2. Clear? Now, suppose I ask you to find what is j equal to 5 by 2 and m. What will you do? 
again the same procedure m 1 m 2. So, for this case it is L m 1 and this case is half m 2 m 1 will take values from minus L to plus L, L is 2. So, minus 2 to plus 2 and m 2 is minus half and plus half. So, what will this be? There will be a CG coefficient of j m, then L m 1 s m 2 and then I am putting it as m 1 m 2. Clear? So, this is what I would write it as a state for some specific only thing you have to remember is that this magnetic quantum number that is true with everything here also you can you have to put in the condition that m is m 1 plus m 2 okay, always the C g coefficients are going to satisfy at least if you see the table m 1 plus m 2 should be the same. So, this was 0 half and minus half adds up to 0 ok same thing here. Ok. So, why if I ask you to write this state and if I give you a table like this what I show on the screen. So, if you see the screen I have given you column states and the row states with these coefficients. So, from there you can read out what is going to be your. So, L is 2, 2 plus half is 5 by 2 and then m and then specific m I could take it to be let us say if I take m to be 3 by 2 can somebody work it out and tell me what it will be by looking at this slide j equal to 5 by 2 m equal to 3 by 2 what is that going to be j equal to 5 by 2 m equal to 3 by 2 will be linear combinations of two states what are the coefficients when you substitute the coefficients you want to see the screen again yeah just put the screen back. So, you have to see which one you have to take ok. Do we have to take this column or this column the first column and then if you look at here it will be a linear combination of m is 3 by 2, 3 by 2 minus half is 1. So, 1 and half with the coefficient L is always 2. So, 2 plus 3 by 2 plus half it is 2 divided by 5 root 5. Okay. So, that is 1 what about the next one? So, you get so, first one you have all said can you say the other one 1 by 1 by root 5 is everybody with her 5 by 2 3 by 2 is 2 by root 5 with what is the m 1 and m 2 m 1 is 1 m 1 is 1 and m 2 is half that is 1 plus 1 by root 5 m 1 is 2 m 2 is minus half is that right are you all with me yes this is a way to read the table and write out the states 